Hey everybody, we're out at the duck coop today to solve a little problem that's been developing for about a year or so. You see, a little over a year ago we had some laying hens. Uh, we were raising white leghorn chickens, specifically for eggs, but also eating whatever uh, roosters came out of it uh, for meat. And a while back we just decided that, or at least my wife pointed out, that we were having more eggs than we were actually consuming. And at the time, there was a lot of uh, constraints that were just making it where the eggs were really going to waste. And uh, we decided um, that we were going to make a switch over to the Muscovy ducks uh, to get more meat out of it and because the eggs were really just going to be made to, to make more uh, baby ducks. So that's what we did. Now, when we designed this coop, it was set up for the chickens. And as such, we bought a chicken water. It was an, an automatic water. And the ducks, I don't know if it really had anything to do with the way that they drink or if it was a manufacturing problem, but the automatic water just didn't work. It kept overflowing and, and all sorts of different things. And I'll show that to you in just a minute. So now that we're having to think about an expansion for the coop, uh, we're also thinking about how we can better manage the water. And in homesteading fashion, we're using a bit of what we have, a little bit of know-how, and a little bit of, hey, what's that over there, to mix it all together and come up with a solution. So stick around and see how we're going to try to fix this. Okay, so this is where the uh, water comes into the coop. And you can see that funny little uh, end piece on there. And what it's for is, is for this bowl. And this bowl is a spring-loaded, if you will, type of valve. And you, you just put it up into here and you lock it in. And it's so busted right now, it's not even going to want to work for me. But anyway, depending on how, how much you tighten or loosen the screw in here, the weight pulls down on it. And once there's enough weight in the bowl, it shuts the valve off. But we were running into a problem where no matter what we did, it never shut the water off all the way. And so it would drip out and get all over the place. And... Uh, one time I called the manufacturer and uh, complained about it and they sent me a new spring and that fixed it for about two months and then it started doing it again. Now I will say this for them, they sent me the spring for free, but even for free I really don't want to have to replace something every two months. The other problem we ran into is just the sheer number of birds that we have and this bowl wasn't enough for them. And since we were having problems, it didn't make much sense to expand this out and have two bowls, one on either side of the pen or anything like that. So. We're going to come up with a different solution. Let me show you. So there's probably a thousand different ways that we can fix this. Uh, I can't imagine the number of different ways people have come up with to water their ducks. I imagine a lot of them just look for a natural resource. They have some kind of pond or stream on their property. And we do have a runoff stream. Uh, it's seasonal, if you will, uh, just about 200 feet down the, uh, down the ravine here. But most of the animals, in fact, all the ducks and chickens we've ever had, uh, don't want to go down that way. It's almost like they sense the security of being up here where the house and the coop are. And it's been really tough. We've tried things. We've put feeders down there. Uh, and they'll go and they'll, they'll feed, and then they'll come right back up here. So we've never really been able to encourage them to go to the natural source of water. So in trying to design something up here for them, we are taking several things into account. First off, we've been told that ducks need to be able to submerge their bill to clean out their nostrils. Now, I don't know all the facts behind that, but yeah, it's really not too difficult to incorporate something that would let that work out anyway, so I'm just going to go ahead with it. Second is a concern about height. You see, with the bowl I was showing you earlier, it was about maybe seven, eight inches above the ground, which meant that any time we had ducklings, we had to construct some stairs so that the duckling could, could get up to that level. But some of the ducklings couldn't quite figure that out. Uh, sometimes there were just too many ducklings for them to all share that. So that was a problem as well. And if we allowed them access up to the kiddie pool by having the same kind of stair system, we actually ran into a problem with a few ducklings drowning in that. So we're trying to come up with a way to give them access to water that's deep enough to submerge their bills, but not so much that it's going to uh, give them a chance to kill themselves. So what we've come up with is using a goat trough. This is something we've had just laying around the property for a couple years. We used it uh, for a while with the goats, but have uh, decided just to, to move away with it for a bunch of other reasons. And I'm going to use it as a water basin. 
and I'm going to put a pipe up through the bottom of it that's going to act like a, a overflow valve and as the water reaches the top of the pipe the water will go through the pipe out of the coop and into an area that Jennifer dug out a while ago where we were thinking about making a, a pond for the ducks we're going to put a pond liner in it and all that kind of good stuff but we never really just finished out that thought process so now we're kind of at that do or don't time limit we've got all these new ducklings we've got 32 ducklings now um, I believe if I remember right Jennifer says we've got eight females and five males uh, as far as the adults go so we've got a lot of ducks they uh, consume obviously a lot of water and they need a little more space and we're going to expand out the coop a little bit to an area that's that doesn't have a solid metal roof on it and it's going to reach into the area that Jennifer dug before so I'm gonna pipe that excess water out through the coop down to the pond area that's right over here and, and we'll see. Uh, everything I've read said that it's too small of an area to retain that much water on its own, uh, that we'd have to put some kind of liner in it. But for now, I need somewhere for the water to go anyway, so that's just going to have to work. Uh, let me show you what we have, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here's the parts that we're going to use for this project, uh, except for the long pieces of uh, three-quarter inch PVC pipe. Uh, a little bit of an explanation. The connection that I showed you for that bowl connects on to a um, like a half inch uh, threaded pipe so uh, what we have down here is a bushing that will connect to that half inch and give us the uh, proper connection that we need the hose connection to go over to this green uh, ball valve and then we will purposefully drip the water slightly into the goat trough which will be our water basin and then inside the goat trough is a standpipe coming up out of it about a, that'll be about half inch shy of the top so as the water as the water fills up it'll hit the top of the pipe flow down the pipe and then escape out into our little pond area let me show you what that looks like so this area is well overgrown uh, that hole was dug quite a while ago but let me risk life and limb and go show you what it looks like Okay, so you can see here the hole that Jennifer dug about a year or so ago, and just some rough estimates here. It's about three foot wide by about six foot long and maybe a foot deep. So it's not very big, and everything I've read says we're going to have to put some kind of liner on this if we're going to keep water in. So if it doesn't keep water very well and all I end up doing is making a, a mosquito breeding ground, then all I'll do is add an extension onto the pipe and run it further back off into the woods where it can keep running down rather than pooling up. So. Uh, it won't be a big deal to fix it if this doesn't work out. We're going to extend the coop out toward here to just beyond this and we'll enclose the entire thing with uh, welded wire so that we don't have any uh, predatory uh, birds, raccoons or anything else getting into this area and we're going to keep it uncovered so that we can keep grass growing in this area at the same time. So. That's the ultimate plan, but for right now, the first thing is to get the water going. So, let's get started. Okay, so if we hadn't had this on here already, then I would be uh, just connecting on the, the right sized, the correctly sized adapter on the end of this. Instead, when I first put this in, it had, we were, we were planning on putting this in, so I bought the uh, slip to half inch threaded so that it would so that it would fit this but now what I could have done is uh, cut this off and put in a connector rather than get the bushing but uh, we've actually had the bushing before for times that uh, well we bought it so we could connect onto this and, and put in a hose before I put in another hose bib on the other side of the shed here so I'm gonna put on some Teflon tape and screw these guys in okay so We've got all that screwed on there, and I'm going to ask Brandon to turn on the shutoff valve that's just outside the coop here. Here we go. All right, and I'm going Again. to do this one. So there we go. So we'll have it drip just barely like that, and then the reservoir will fill up, and like everything else I've already told you before. So now I'm going to dig out the hole for the goat trough and for the pipe. I suppose it's only right that I uh, mention as I'm digging out this big hole that I put in this pipe so I know exactly where it is underground. 
And uh, even though I do, I'm still being very careful. If uh, you're working someplace where someone else installed it, I would have started right next to that pipe and slowly dug it out by hand, like with a garden trowel or something, to find out which way it runs underground before doing anything. Four years ago when we had our house built, I got really mad at the contractor because he left all his cinder block about 30 feet down into the woods and they didn't find it until it was too late to complain about it. Now maybe I should thank him. I'm just putting this down to give a bit of a base. Hopefully it won't sink if the outside water uh, if the ducks splash too much water. I don't, I don't want the soil getting so wet that it, that it sinks any. So I'm going to put a little of this uh, broke up cinder block down in it. So probably the only thing I'm really worried about is making sure this stays level or otherwise my overflow is not going to do a bit of good. I'll probably overflow over the side of it. So we'll tinker with this until I get it level and sturdy in that position. Okay, that's about as close as level as I need it for now. I'll get it perfectly level when I actually backfill it and we're ready to turn the whole system on. Uh, for now, I'm going to finish out digging the hole for the drain pipe. And uh, then we'll tap out the hole in the basin and connect the piping. Okay, well, I'm working on the trench here. And just in case you've never been under a tin roof when it rains, I had to share this with you. That's like one of my favorite sounds. Okay, well, back to work. Well, the rain stopped for a minute. And out of everything that I'm doing out here, this is about the only thing I'm super worried about because this is my cut once and no second chance kind of issue. So I'm about to put the hole in the bottom of this trench, which right now is waterproof, and in a minute it won't be. So I've done my best to uh, line up which bit I think is going to work. I've got a 15 16 here. And it is just shy the distance of these threads, or the width of these threads. So I'm going to start there. And it's actually threading right through it, just right. So despite the fact that this actually threads into here uh, pretty snugly, I'm still going to go ahead and... Uh, make a grommet for the seal between the container and the and the pipe itself and the gentleman said that there wasn't any grommet that was going to fit so he gave me this and said that uh, I'm going to have to make my own and he said simply just push this down on here to make a mark and cut it out myself so I'll make a better mark and we'll go from there well that's my first time trying to do one like this so I hope it works out uh, what I simply did was just uh, cut out a large square uh, that I knew was way oversized and then pushed, uh, put this end down over it, went around the outside with the, uh, exact, with the box knife and just marked out where it was and then went back and actually trimmed it out. So, um, sorry the camera wasn't recording when that was happening, but I didn't want to redo it just in case I need any more of this material. Um, so, you can see I already tried doing it a different way. And, and that failed, so I decided to go this route. And uh, if this fails, I'll make sure the camera's recording next time. But that's what I'm going to work with. And now this. This will actually be the uh, interior going down through here. And then... Once I have that in all the way, we'll connect in this threaded, slip to thread, and then we'll elbow into that. Okay, so I got that in there, and you can see I put some water in. It's right at the top of the, uh, right at the top of that there. Let's see if it's leaking. Okay, well that's as close as I can get you on my tripod without uh, causing any kind of problems, making you seasick and going handheld, but. Any water you see is coming from the inside of the of the pipe. I'm not seeing anything around the outside, so looks like that uh, homemade grommet's gonna work. 
Okay, everybody, as you can see, I did a little bit here while you were uh, off the camera. I've added in the standpipe, which is about a half inch lower than the top of this. I just stuck a piece of PVC in there, took a little hacksaw, made a mark, uh, just, a, just a little bit of a scratch, pulled it out, went down a half inch and chopped it off, and now put it all the way back in. And that's just connected down uh, straight into, it's uh, just a slip joint, just straight down into this bushing, or adapter, I guess it is. Um, not going to cement it or anything because there's there's no need for it and then I've uh, screwed in the the bottom side one so now that we've got all that together I'm going to do just a little bit of a test before I connect everything else up okay so everything is in and um, looking at this the water is still uh, fairly close to the edge but it has not gone over so we're just going to monitor it and if for some reason it ever does go over then we'll uh, trim down that standpipe uh, just a little bit more. The other thing we're going to change as soon as we go uh, back into town is I'm going to buy a male end for a hose repair. And I'm going to take a small section of some old hose and use that hose repair kit to make a just a 8 inch hose to drop from that connection down into there because otherwise there's a lot of mist and spray that still misses. But otherwise, the only other thing is you can see I, I dug down and there was about three inches worth of soil till I hit concrete and uh, rather than bust through all the concrete I was just barely above um, or, or just barely had a, enough of a grade to be able to say that it was okay and not break any of the concrete down and then it goes out into the little ditch I showed you earlier so so far everything's good now we'll just uh, backfill it and uh, don't have any pipe that's going to be above ground and we're just to backfill this part for stability and it'll be done so here's the end result for today the grate that's on top came with the feeder and uh, we decided to put it back on to discourage any of the little ducklings to try to use that as a swimming pool so that's why that's there um, put some hay around it the rain today and just working with uh, the water, you know, that I was telling you before the problems we were having, this area is all mucky because of the problems that we were having with the water, uh, not because of the ducks. So it's kind of hard working with this soil, how wet it was, but there was no fix for it until I could just put something like this up. So got all that trenched back in, close this up. Ducks are away for the evening. Got all that trenched back in. And here's where we come back out. And the ducks have been uh, already happily drinking, so there's really not much coming out of here. So I'm not really, it was steadily dripping back there, um, but you see there's really nothing too much coming out on this side of the field pipe. So happy with it so far. We'll see if we have to make adjustments as things go. The only thing I am worried about is this is the spot where the pipe is the most shallow. As you can see, the overhang of the tin roof causes a bit of erosion right here. And uh, right where I dug it out, the pipe's only about two inches under the ground right there. So I'll just have to watch the erosion and adjust as necessary. But uh, until then, we have solved the problem of ducks needing water. Well, that's going to do it for this project for today. I hope you all are able to take something away from this. If you're sitting there thinking that's an awful lot of waste of water, all you're doing is filling a plastic container and then letting it go off into the woods and you're paying for that water coming out of the pipe, I'd ask you to think about um, the reasons on why, why we chose to do it this way. Fee uh, watering the ducks is a bit of a, a difficulty for us. You see, if the if the container's too small, they can't flush out their nostrils. If it's too big, then they think they can swim in it, which also means they're going to poop in it. And that's just a real big hassle. So we had to pick a container that's the right size to kind of mitigate and off-balance both of those. But when a container's that size, you're looking at having to refill it every single day. And maybe twice a day once we get into the 105 degree August days that we can have around here. Uh, along with the high humidity that can make it a whole lot worse. So we wanted something that's going to supply them constantly with water so that we don't get ourselves in a bind, forget about it, or something takes us away from the property and, and they end up suffering for it. So 
we went with this because of all those factors and the reason I liked being able to put it over here is because of the pond that we dug out before whether that works out or not is not going to change my opinion on whether we we keep this the only reason I wouldn't keep this is if I run into problems with actually keeping them in water uh, also we were watering them like this before so putting this out here really is not a concern to me maybe it would be to you and I understand that but hopefully you can take something away from this now if you've ever built something like this before or you have any thoughts or suggestions about things that you see might be wrong in the future hey we're open for comments on that so please go ahead and leave them below if you have done something like this you've made a uh, video on it leave a video response and I'll be happy to share that with everybody also please subscribe and that's important and I, and I bring it up because if you like this video by subscribing YouTube will send you an email letting you know every time we have a new upload so you don't have to worry about checking back every so often to see what we've got and being disappointed because you didn't see a new one or something like that so subscribe so you can get the notifications it'll save you some time and besides that I just want to thank you all for taking the time to watch I know this is a little bit longer of a video uh, but it took a little long time uh, other than some uh, breaks because of the rain and supper and things like that this whole project took about I'd say an hour and a half so if you're looking to do something uh, set yourself two hours so that you know that if uh, you run into any problems you got a little spare time thanks you all for watching and have a good day a lot of eggs but we're actually finding that we weren't using as many eggs some kind of loud woodpecker. <laughs>